A lovely evening to you and welcome to the news on the network service of the NTA. I am Lydia Odidi Ochi. We thank you for joining us. The Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 some moments ago updated the media on the national response to the coronavirus pandemic. Let's now join Nita Ekwen from the venue of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19, where the issue was raised. Nita let us into some of the salient points. Thank you, Lydia. The chairman of the Presidential Task Force and Secretary to Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, announced that the federal government is working with stakeholders to provide medical and um, life insurance cover for frontline health workers engaged in the fight against COVID-19. This is against the background of the risk and dangers they are exposed to while performing their duty. Also, we're also told by the um, DG Director General of the Nigeria Center for Disease Control that one more laboratory has been added to the nation's testing capacity, bringing a number of laboratories to eight at the moment. The Minister of Information and Culture also talked about a directive from the National Broadcasting Commission to all broadcast media houses not to entertain unverified claims for the treatment of COVID-19. I now have the Minister of Information and Culture joining me live now to throw more light on this. Honorable Minister, sir, precisely what informed the directive by the National Broadcasting Commission? Well, I think um, as we've always you know, emphasized here, there's no known vaccine or medicine to cure the COVID-19. But we've noticed that some people have gone on the radio and on television claiming that they have certain remedies for this pandemic. This is very dangerous because the report we have now actually is that even uh, at the at many of our isolation centers in Lagos, so many people are suffering from overdose of some drugs which are, have not been you know authorized. So we had to go out to uh, to to alert the nation, and fortunately the MBC uh, has issued a statement to the fact that uh, any station whatsoever that uh, brokers any unverified claim about uh, uh, you know, about uh, getting a remedy for the pandemic will be sanctioned. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I think it was yesterday, a station, uh, somebody went on a station and claimed that it's nonsense, there's nothing called the coronavirus. And you know, when um, influential people, either faith leaders, personal leaders, politicians, when they make such claims, people are likely to be, you know to believe them. That is why the NBC issued that directive. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Lydia, just to add that the chairman of the task force, Mr. Boss Mustafa, also appealed to law enforcement agencies to exercise caution and reason while uh, enforcing the restriction order on Nigerians. That's it from here at the moment. It's back to the studio. Thank you, Mitari Ikpen, for that uh, uh, situation and briefing the report now. We still have more on COVID-19. As of this morning, the 3rd of April, six new cases of COVID-19 were confirmed, bringing the total number of confirmed cases to 190. The six new cases are reported in Oshun State. 20 have been discharged, while death records remain two. Lagos State has recorded 16 new cases of COVID-19, putting the total figure of confirmed cases to 98. The State, Min the state Min Commissioner of Health, Aki Ab Abayomi, disclosed this during a live broadcast on the update of coronavirus in the state. We diagnosed 16 new patients. So we are 
total, we discharged 15 over the last two days. And yesterday, we uh, diagnosed 16 new patients. The principle that we're trying to implement is the concept of flattening the curve. Essentially, that means that we're trying to reduce the speed at which we get new patients. That allows us the time and the space to accommodate patients that may have moderate to severe disease. At the moment, most of our patients have had mild disease, some bordering on moderate. We have had no deaths, and our patients seem to be profiling well and spending between one to two weeks on admission before they are discharged when their tests are negative. Our sum total of confirmed cases is 98 to date. 98, that's our sum total of confirmed cases in Lagos. Out of those 98, we still have 74 active cases. In other words, they have not turned negative yet. And we have 24 that have fully recovered and discharged. The local government that has the highest number of confirmed cases is Etiosa with 47, followed by Ikeja with 24, and Lagos mainland with 11. Alimosho, Agege, and Ikorodu have the lowest number of confirmed cases with one in each of those local government areas. That was the Lagos State Commission of Health, Professor Aki Abayomi, giving a brief on the latest on COVID-19 in that state. Now, more on proactive measures in curtailing the spread of COVID-19, this time from Oshun State, as Governor Boyega Oyetola signs into law the state's Infectious Diseases Regulations 2020. And I'll join Shagun Lawole for a situation report. Shagun, what is the update since our last conversation? Thank you, Lydia. Now, in Osho, the situation at Ejibo is quite germane. After our discussion, I made some inquiries and discovered that the general hospital, which is a 30 bed uh, hospital, has been converted to an isolation center. And this is to accommodate the identified cases of uh, for coronavirus amongst the 127 returnees from Cote d'Ivoire. So it's a good news though. And uh, the apprehension, the early apprehension I talked about uh, was the fact that some of these returnees made attempts to escape. Uh, it failed because they, they are not from Oshun State, so they wanted to return to their, perhaps their country homes. But uh, government prevented them from doing so. So they were assured that before they are able to release any one of them, whoever is interested in living at age ago, I must get necessary medical care. And that is the situation at that isolation center for now. And that makes it two isolation centers in Oshun State. The first one has been at the General Hospital in Oshobo. That is uh, Ashubi Aru. We are currently, we have uh, five cases. And uh, from inquiries, I understand that the five cases are in stable condition. These five cases have nothing to do with the uh, Ijibo returnees. And uh, before I uh, leave, uh, now a state has commenced this infection of major markets across the major towns in Osho State. That started last night. And uh, this is going to be extended to worship centers in the state. Government is not appealing to religious leaders to open for this infection. Lydia. Thank you very much, uh, Shagun, for that update from Oshun State. We're grateful. Thank you. Moving on to our next story on COVID-19, the Akwaibom State Governor Udom Emmanuel has ordered a complete cessation of movement in the state 
for a period of 14 days. The total lockdown, according to the governor in a state broadcast, becomes imperative following a report of five confirmed cases of coronavirus in the state. Susan Asuko has details. The five confirmed cases who are mostly healthcare professionals, Governor Odom Emmanuel C, are in good health and have so far presented no symptoms. While the five COVID-19 confirmed cases have been moved to the isolation centers for proper management, the process of contact tracing has begun to identify those who may have been exposed to them. To this end, Governor Emmanuel has declared a cessation of movement in the state within a period of 14 days. There will be no movement of persons except those on essential duties who must carry a proper means of identification on them at all times. All business premises, markets, shops, motor parks, and offices must remain closed during this period. In Uyo, Susan Asukwa, NTN News. From Aquai Bomb, we go to Ogun State live via Skype. And Lekong is standing by. Lekong, what is life like in Ogun State as the people prepare for lockdown? Okay, let me go repeat my question. What is life like, like in uh, Ogun State as the people prepare for lockdown? Thank you, studio. Uh, the life here in Abekuta, we can describe it as a, a rush hour. Indeed, we are around the Itoku area, the commercial nerves of the capital city. This is the place by uh, Kampala Adire on daily basis. Uh, the popular movement with, uh, within the metropolis is gradually reducing, while some areas are experiencing a mild big lock. As some people are really broke, uh, ahead of the time, shop stores are standing uh, up, activities in the, at, at homes. So they want to go back, they want to go home on time so that they can beat uh, the deadline. Lekon, I want to uh, ask, put across one more question to you. Um, we, it's on record that Ogun State has four cases. What is the status of healthcare facilities in your state? Uh, the good news about the state is that the number of COVID-19 cases uh, are still, still in a, a single digit bracket. And uh, also, the state government is not uh, resting on its or doing everything. Thank you, Lekong. Thank you so much. We're going to go to Dara now in our next report. While the federal government is working round the clock to contain the spread of the dreaded coronavirus, Kasina state government is also not left out in the direction as more preventive measures have been enforced to mitigate its impact. Members of the public have also keyed into the clarion call as interstate movement restriction policy imposed is being adhered to. This is Kanozindar Highway, which is one of the most busiest roads in northwestern parts of Nigeria. But the restriction order on vehicular movement directed by both federal and state governments to contain the spread of coronavirus, the once busy road is now deserted. All roads linking Kasina State and other parts of the country are manned by security personnel to monitor movement of persons into the state. Meanwhile, healthcare personnel in Kasina State embark on door-to-door -door sensitization on how residents can protect themselves against COVID-19. We have decided to embark on these mobilizations, to especially our staffs in general that are going to pass these cases and also the general public to lead them on the preventive measures on how to overcome and prevent themselves from contacting this type of diseases. Already, the state government adopted measures to contain the spread of COVID-19 in Katsina states. You're still watching Nationwide. Let's go over to Lagos with Jennifer standing by with more stories from that end. Jennifer. Thank you, Lydia. Now, when President Mohamed Lydia ordered a total lockdown on Abuja and Lagos for a period of two 
weeks, it was to ensure strict compliance with the rule of social distancing, a practical measure that must be taken to stop further spread of COVID-19. However, during a drive-by on Friday, Becky Madujemu came upon shocking scenarios that exposed the restless nature of most Lagos residents. The energy and vibe in Lagos Friday are at variance with footages of empty cities in overseas countries under lockdown projected by foreign cable news channels. More cars are on the roads. It was mind-boggling confronting pockets of gridlock at rams. Even ambulances that may likely have feverish, breathless patients on board are no longer having an easy, breezy ride. Talking about ambulances, they now dot major roads in Lagos. My camera lens caught an ambulance driver helping out a few stranded hitchhikers. If you are wondering how safe it is to catch a ride on an ambulance right now, considering the risks involved, what would you say about this crowd on the sidewalk of the Lekki Ekwe Expressway? Social distancing gone bizarre, you would certainly say. These are protesters clamoring for food. An angry spokesman alleged that executive members of Ikate Community Development Association are holding on to a truckload of food items due them. It's what protest we say. Dead, dead. If Pharaohs kill us, not dead. If hunger kill us, not dead. For a quarter year, Pharaohs no kill us. Now hunger, they won't kill us. For three days now, it's been like six months. We don't get food to eat. Now they will come aside. The CDA chairman dismissed the allegation and assured that the protesters will get their fair share soon. We met yesterday with a solid arrangement. They are bringing what we call a full support to the community. That will cover more than 2,000 plus families. When, when, my, when will that come? That will be tomorrow. We are making an arrangement. As I moved far away from the dramatic location, I observed that enforcement was rather lukewarm. Some checkpoints were unmanned while others were besieged by multiple queues of vehicles with motorists taking turns to prove to overwhelmed enforcement agents that they are essential workers or have emergency situations at hand. I also discovered that commercial drivers are back in business but tactically avoid checkpoints. When we got to my check, they actually stopped our vehicle not to move anymore, the police. We don't have any other show that to check because I'm going to the bank. I just need the money. From the look of things, the coming days would most likely be hectic in the metropolis in Lagos. <laughs> Becky Madojemo, NT News. Interesting. Now, the European Union has airlifted the first badge of French and German nationals, numbering 630 from the Moritala Mohammed International Airport, Lagos. Abouladi Salami reports that the travelers passed through several screenings to confirm their health status before boarding. The international wing of Muritala Mohammed Airport recorded a bit of activities owing to the exit of EU national from Germany and France. Would all passengers travelling on flight FR3421 please have your boarding pass? The profiling of travellers started with the verification of documents and screening of luggages to ascertain the authenticity of their papers under the supervision of German police and officials from the embassy. Meanwhile, travellers on board Air France was subjected to same processes of verification. However, information provided on the manifest reveals that Air France has 390 passengers on board, while Lufthansa Airline was carrying more than 230 passengers. In Lagos, Abola Salami, NTA News. 
And in spite of the lockdown, business activities are ongoing at the seaports. This is sequel to the federal government's directive that importation and exportation of goods or essential services that should be exempted from the restriction. Ken Igbeluge reports. Activities at the Apapa and Tikan Island ports are central for the growth of the nation's economy. This is why they were exempted from the lockdown, considering the essential services they provide. This move by the government is also to avoid congestion at the ports. To ascertain the level of compliance, members of the Nigerian Shippers Council visited the ports for an on-the-spot assessment. At the moment, we are operating with 30-40% of our staff strength, and we see a low level of deliveries. challenge is this. For freight forwarders who want to make payment uh, for services that we render, they are not able to do it. Uh, it's important for the financial institutions, you know, uh, in, in a proper port to uh, be allowed to operate. The Deputy Secretary, Nigeria's Shippers Council, judged operators that arrangements have been made for operations at the ports to continue without hindrance. We have initiated that uh, and provided transport for critical our workers at the ports, including freight forwarders, uh, and then they, they will use that transport to come in. Uh, we have also talked with some commercial banks, and they have cooperated. Observers are of the opinion that with the measures put in place by government at the ports, importation and exportation at this period would be hitch free in Lagos, Ken, Igbeluge, and Enu. Thank you, Ken. Nationwide continues after the break. Stay tuned. Thanks for staying with us. The FCT Minister of State, Ramatu Tijani Aliu, has called on residents to ignore the rumor making the rounds on the social media platforms, claiming that over 100 patients of coronavirus are in Kubwa General Hospital receiving treatment. The minister who made this call on a fact-finding mission to the hospital management described the rumor as fake news. Ifani Ezumba reports. Emphasizing that it is a rumor taken to an extreme point, especially at this critical period, the FCT Minister of State, Rama Tutijani Aliu, stated that there are designated isolation centers where asymptomatic patients are kept in different parts of the territory, adding that her visit was not just fact-finding mission, but to restore confidence in the minds of the people. We know that with your knowledge of what it is and the biology that you will also not keep the COVID-19 patients in this facility. No such thing in Kuba General Hospital. We have never relayed such information to anybody or to the public at any time by any person or any officer of this institution. In a related development, the FCT Minister of State also visited the Kuba market in Abuja. Ifani. For most residents of rural communities in Suleja Emirate of Niger State, the stay-at-home order towards curtailing the spread and prevention of the coronavirus means little or nothing as it is business as usual. Mukhtar Abubakar Wuwo, who monitored level of compliance in Suleja, Gurara and Tafa local government areas, reports that the situation is worrisome to both health workers and the local authorities. As at the time of filing this report, Niger State has not recorded any case of COVID-19. Compliance with preventive measures is necessary considering the proximity between some local government areas in the state and the federal capital territory, Abuja, which has confirmed cases of coronavirus. Those most at risk are rural dwellers. I didn't know about coronavirus. We have not seen anybody to explain all this to us. Even at the headquarters of the two local government areas, Suleja and Tafa, bordering the federal capital territory, Abuja, security operatives, in collaboration with the local vigilante groups, are finding it difficult to enforce the ban on the movement of people and vehicles. Heated arguments ensued between somebody who claimed to be a police officer with the security enforcing the movement ban in one of the checkpoints in Suleja. Some health workers advocate the need to further sensitize the people on the dangers and prevention of the COVID-19. Mukhtar Abubakaru, NTA News. 
Borno State Government begins fumigation of worship places. For details of this and other reports, let's link up with Mohammed in our Medugri Network Center. Thank you, Lydia, and welcome to Medugri. As part of preparedness to contain the spread of the dreaded global health pandemic, Borno State Environmental Protection Agency, BOSEPA, has embarked on fumigation of worship centers within Medugri Metropolitan Council and general local government areas of Borno State. Yagun Subukar reports. One of the steps taken by the state government to ensure that the coronavirus pandemic does not find its way into the state. The fumigation of churches and mosques within Medjugri, the state capital and environs, became necessary in view of its vulnerability due to close contact with people. We felt it absolutely necessary to fumigate all the uh, central mosques where we will do our fri fri uh, Friday mosques, and other faiths is also inclusive. Apart the fumigation, we are now swinging into action of spraying, which we are going to use all our napsack sprayer and we use all the germicide chemicals. Unfortunately for us, Boseva has a workforce of environmental head officers. Other measures taken are in the areas of social distancing in addition to sensitization. No Kikena PF should take more than two passengers and three being with the rider. Royal Highness, the show of Borno. Direct all the district heads and the village heads and the ward heads to create awareness. These fumigation are part of measures by the Borno State Government to ensure public places are safe for use. In Meduguri, Yagum Subukar, NTA News. The need for well meaning Nigerians to continue rendering all forms of support towards fighting the spread of coronavirus has again been emphasized. This came up during advocacy and sensitization tour to IDP camps and secondary schools across Medugri, the state capital, by Borno State Command of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps. Jedwa John Jessini reports. These are some of the measures put in place by NSCDC Borno State towards ensuring that hygiene is observed right from the entrance of the IDP's camp. Earlier, the command had carried out sensitization exercise at camps and other places harboring large number of people as well as maintain social distance at all times. As part of its corporate social responsibility, the command has now provided hand washing facilities at camp entrances for the IDPs with a view to prevent transporting the virus into the camp. A total of 250 personnel of civil defense all over Borno State have been deployed. So here in Bakasi Kang we have 50 of them here because of the uh, large number. So apart from enforcing the order, we also want to enlighten them on uh, personal hygiene. Similar donation was also made at Government Day Secondary School, Mary, and Yerwa Government Girls Secondary School, Medugri. Principals of both schools thanked NSCDC for the donation and assured to use it for the good of the student and the teachers. The command's office is not left out in ensuring that safety of personnel is made a priority. In a day, we get an average of 300 people that come to lodge complaint one way or the other. Well, these are parts of it. We sensitize them. In Medugri, Chadwajun Jesini, NTN News. That is it from Medugri. Nationwide continues in Abuja. Many thanks, Mohammed. Now, a good number of uh, states of the Federation are free of the COVID-19. One of such states is Kwara State, but it shares boundaries with Oyo and Ocean states they, th that have recorded cases of the coronavirus pandemic. We now join via live telephone conversation the Health Commissioner of Kwara State, Dr. Raji Razak. Thank you for joining us on Nationwide. Yeah, thank you. Okay, now, how proactive is the state in ensuring that COVID-19 does not get to Quara State? Yeah, as a um, part of the um, preventive measures taken by Quara State government under the leadership of Madam Abdelazak as a man or governor, is um, to uh, inaugurate a uh, uh, COVID-19 technical committee that is headed by the uh, deputy governor, who is the chairman of COVID-19 technical committee. And I serve as only functional to help and the vice chairman one of the COVID uh uh and nineteen seventy five committee and we have the head matters as the vice chairman two when we have a secretary who is from the head of health. Uh one of the preventive measures we have taken is the one to ensure that we have a partial lockdown in the state. 
so that the uh, one time they are not moving, or kind of right now, they are not going out, the ten and ten are not going, the international are not going out. But we are now finding the to the moment where we ask them to observe social distancing, that they are the only two passengers can be at the back. Then uh, we close our borders. Okay. We don't want to go to public, we are close our borders, except these vehicles are carrying food items and uh, medical supplies or, uh, or, 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 or medication. Okay. So situation report from uh, your state on your preparedness to prevent COVID-19 from entering Kwara State. Thank you so much. We've been talking to the Commissioner, Health Commissioner of Kwara State, Dr. Raji Razak. Thank you. Now, the activation of the virology laboratory of the Alex Ekweme Federal Teaching Hospital at Bakliki for COVID-19 testing by the federal government has received widespread commendation from Ebony people. Neka Oko reports that the additional measure has further bolstered the people's confidence in the APC-led administration to end the COVID-19 pandemic. In response to the fast increasing number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the country, the federal government expanded the number of diagnostic centers with the capacity to conduct the test. With the expansion, the virology units of the Alex Ekweme Federal Teaching Hospital Abakliki becomes one of the seven testing centers for the coronavirus in Nigeria. This will go a long way to reduce the anxiety that may arise following suspicion. Is covering the whole of Southeast and South South, if need be. The Chief Medical Director, Dr. Emeka Oga, applauded efforts of government at all levels in combating the dreaded disease, especially with the new laboratory in the state. He re emphasized the importance of personal hygiene as recommended by health bodies. Because it's possible there might be people who may be having a feeling, but where to go or how to have access to it. So it's really good that it should be in every state. It is a good development to hear this. Both federal government and state governments, they are working hard to make sure that this ravaging epidemics should not, you know, penetrate in some other states. According to the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and CDC, work is in progress in Meduguri, Sokoto, Kanu, Kaduna, Jos, and Portakot for additional testing centers. In Abakaliki, Neka Uku, NTE News. Our next report from Dutse says there are indications that many public places located in rural areas of Jigawa State have not been adequately equipped or enlightened on the preventive measures against the deadly coronavirus pandemic. Mansur Aliu Hassan reports that this is not unconnected to non challenged attitude exhibited by the people in one of the weekly markets he visited to find out how social distancing policy is being observed. Located about 7 km drive from Dusi, Laraba, as it is popularly known, is the only major market in the capital city of Jigawa State. Apart from serving its host community, the market is the only alternative to about six towns and many villages, including those from the neighboring Kano State. One may think this minor gridlock may be a stumbling block to the weekly ritual of hustle and bustling of buyers and sellers at the popular Laraba market which is not unconnected with the restriction of movement from one state to another. 
imposed due to the outbreak of coronavirus pandemic. A visit to the market reveals that there was near or total absence of any sign that indicates there is an emergency situation which requires serious attention. There was little or no provision for any preventive measure against the virus in case there is an outbreak. The major problem we are facing here is that the people from the rural areas are totally ignorant of what is happening. If left at home, so the present vaccine will, will be gone. Jigawa is among the many states in the country where there was no reported cases of COVID-19. However, adequate preventive measures are being taken to safeguard the citizens from contracting. Many are of the view that total lockdown of all public places will be the only solution to the fear associated with COVID-19. In Duse, Mansour Ali Hassan, NTA News. Governor Samuel Otom has charged council chairmen and traditional rulers to be highly committed in sensitizing their communities and ensuring compliance with all directives regarding the prevention of the spread of coronavirus pandemic. The governor stated this at a maiden meeting with members of the local government COVID-19 Action Committee at Government House in Makudi. Charles Abba was there. Governor Samuel Otom, who says his administration places high premium on the health and safety of the lives of the people, emphasizes that COVID-19 disease is no respect of persons as many high-profile personalities have tested positive to the virus. The governor maintains that all hands must be on deck to curb the spread of the virus. I have declared one month fasting and prayer against this virus. While various traditional rulers laud the state government's efforts in mitigating the escalation of the disease, the chairman, Benway State Traditional Council, Professor James Ayase, who calls for palliative measures for the less privileged in the state, says that he has continued to address his subjects on precautionary measures against the pandemic. We have some concerns at the rural areas. A lot of our sons and daughters are coming back home from areas that are endemic. The inaugurated local government COVID-19 Action Committee has levels of council, kindred and streets. Charles Abba, NTA News. Religious bodies are complementing government efforts in the containment of coronavirus pandemic. We have in the studio Ustaz Abubakar Siddiq, an Islamic scholar, to throw more light on this. Now, sir, thank you for, first of all, thank you for coming on Nationwide. You're welcome. Nation. Now, what is the Islamic stand in matters of compliance with government directives for the lockdown? All you who believe, obey Allah and obey the messenger and obey those among you who are in authority. The interpretation of those who are in authority are the Islamic scholars and those that are in authority in government mm -hmm. now when things like this come the best the scholars would do is to listen to the experts on those issues as we have been doing listening to the doctors uh, in in their various expertise and and, and fields of uh, medicine whatever they say the scholars will now put that with what the texts are saying and give directives and that is what they have done they listen to the doctors the doctors have said it and of course uh, with regards to COVID uh, is like is like proving what has been established in Islam for a very long time it is it is there any religious text you open that discusses jurisprudence in Islam the first topic is cleanliness Oh. It speaks about cleaning yourselves, getting ready for worship because you are going to communicate with your maker, wash your hands properly, wash your face, faces, anything that is, that is apparent on your body should be washed properly. We do that five times a day, even without COVID. And uh, the place must be clean, your clothing must be clean so that your heart will be clean. So 
uh, washing hands, social distancing and whatever, the scholars listened to the experts mm -hmm. and they gave their verdict. Okay, now, there are some pockets or reports, especially in the rural areas, where some worshippers in mosques still converge to perform the obligatory uh, prayers. What is your take on they this? They are not working with the Quranic verse that I quoted at the beginning of my speech. Follow, obey Allah, obey his messenger, and obey those among you who are in authority. Nobody is saying you are not going to pray. No, you pray in your houses. You pray as you normally do. Whoever uses, who, who, whoever is used to going to the mosque to pray, the five obligatory prayers and the Juma prayer that today we have not uh, observed in Abuja, but we have actually because, but for coronavirus, we would have gone to the mosque and prayed and therefore our recompense rests with Allah completely as if we have been there because but for it we would have been now I think you've said it all thank you for coming on nationwide we've been talking that is so to Ustaz, short yes <laughs> Ustaz Abubakar Siddiq an Islamic scholar thank you for the insight you've given to us no. now we're going to Ibadan, rural awareness on coronavirus, and Kemi is standing by there. Hello, Kemi. And welcome to Ibadan. The increasing number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the country on a daily basis calls for check on how informed people are about the pandemic and possible preventive measures. Correspondent Kemi Oshin visited some rural communities in Oyo State to assess at their level of awareness and compliance to experts' advice on coronavirus pandemic. Several jingles and enlightenment programs on television and radio have no doubt created a high level of awareness on the pandemic and its spread even in rural communities as observed in Egbeda local government. Since we should wash our hands with soap, clean up, and then do not say can we say each other. Okay. And when we are out, we should give a distance. This is Egbeda Market in Egbeda, a suburb of Ibadan, the Oyo State capital. The people here seem to be living in total disregard of expert advice on curtailing the spread of the coronavirus pandemic. Clusters of people in the market, number of passengers in most of the commercial vehicles, with the fact that no visible hand washing facility anywhere in the community indicates poor level of compliance to preventive measures to the spread of COVID-19. They were aware, but are they going to stay indoor to die? They said don't get kiss more than uh, coffee. <laughs> coffee 19. <laughs> the situation is a bit different in the suburb community of Oludo, where most businesses have closed to comply with the stay-at-home order to curb the spread of COVID-19. Traditional head of the community also complemented efforts of government in ensuring the people follow the laid-down guidelines. According to what the, uh, the government gives to everybody, we are washing our hands, sanitize, and then clean, cleaning all surrounding our uh, compound. Residents in suburb are advised not to leave anything to chance in ensuring that the coronavirus pandemic does not spread to their community in Ibadan. Kemioshi, NTA News. The Oyo State Government has appealed to well-meaning Nigerians to support his social responsibility scheme at meeting the yearnings of millions of the downtrodden who are experiencing difficulty during this period of COVID-19. The State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Bashir Bailu, made this appeal while receiving some relief materials and medical facilities from butchers in the state. Correspondent Rofia and Nimashan Badmus has details. The items delivered to your state government by the butchers at the Central Abattoir in Ibadan include 100 adjustable hospital beds, 50 mattresses, bedside furniture, and 100 mosquito nets. According to the leadership of the butchers, the contribution was necessary because everyone should join government in the fight against COVID-19. We see this as a corporate social responsibility on our part to help Oyo State in this hour of need. Oyo State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Bashir Bello, expressed the state government appreciation for the gesture and called on other well-meaning individuals and organizations to emulate the butchers. In our efforts and appeal 
to the good people of Ohio State, uh, we are seeing a very good response. Meanwhile, the state government has started distributing items such as buckets, hand sanitizers, and liquid hand washing soap to different local government areas in the state. In Ibadan, Wafia and Imasha Badmos, NTA News. And that's it from Ibadan. More reports after the break. Do stay with us. Welcome back. Kano State government has taken drastic measures to prevent the importation of COVID-19 into the state. Yahana Hassan Barau reports that Assistant Inspector General of Police Zone 1, Abubakar Sadiq Bello, visited one of the Kano boundaries to monitor the level of compliance to the directives of border closure by the state government. This is Kwana Dawaki, one of the borders linking Kano to other parts of the country. The boundary looks busy with commuters looking disturbed, unmindful of the social distancing the World Health Organization has been advocating for. Fale Lumusa is one of the travelers who is coming from neighboring states, was restricted from passing the border. I feel Kaduna has been relaxed, uh, so I took that opportunity to visit a grandmom here. Like Fale Lu, many commuters were not allowed access by the Joint Tax Force of Security Operatives, while those carrying essential commodities were screened by health officials to prevent infiltration of the pandemic into the state. The Assistant Inspector General of Police Zone 1, Abubakar Sadiq Bello, on an inspection visit, expressed satisfaction on how security agencies are discharging their duties. We are supposed to be very professional. So if an officer did not perform his job professionally, definitely uh, there is going to be uh, a repercussion. In Kano, Yohana Sahasambaro, NTA News. In compliance with the federal government's directives, social investment program in Sokoto has commenced disbursement of funds to beneficiaries of conditional cash transfer in the state. Musa Abubakar, who was at the flagging off of payment at Tambual reports. With more and more restrictions to check the spread of COVID-19, beneficiaries of social investment program thought they had to wait longer for their next payment. This is not to be for the beneficiaries of conditional cash transfers. Saada to Umar and others who received two months payment expressed satisfaction with the development. This followed directives of the president to commence two months payment with the aim of cushioning the effects of tight restrictions on socio-economic activities due to the coronavirus pandemic. For the federal government, Nigeria, Muhammad Buhari, to commence payment of the stipends given to uh, vulnerable people in each local government of the country. So for now, we are paying the beneficiaries uh, <coughs> But, uh, for the first phase, 10,000 naira. With more than 3,000 beneficiaries in the state, the payment is part of efforts to make social distancing more effective among citizens. In Sakwatu, I am Musa Abubakar, NTA News. Meanwhile, the conditional cash transfer to the most indigent and vulnerable in the country by the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development has entered its second day with a simultaneous rollout in Anambra, Katsina and Nasrawa states. In a statement, the Special Assistant on Media to the Minister Salisu Naina Dambata says the Minister Sadia Umar Farouk has earlier, had earlier approved the cash transfers to beneficiaries in the country. The payment was part of the immediate palliatives promised by President Mohamed Buhari as to caution the effects of the partial lockdown of the country as part of measures to contain the COVID-19. And now sports with Tamara Ebiwe. If you feel unwell, have a fever, cough, and difficulty breathing, just panic.